So if you re rewind back a few months, you probably realised that there was quite a large number of patients that uh, was coming through our doors, right? So we needed to have a plan, right? And part of the plan to build that capacity was to have this capability. Right? So it allows us to hold patients who are suspect cases or confirmed COVID cases, but also to deal with patients who might have other infectious diseases. The timeline is actually very short. Normally, we take months to do a construction and a erection, but this one we'll do it in a couple of weeks. So with the lockdown, the foreign workers' friend can't come out at all to assist us. Initially, we managed to get Singaporean and PRs uh, who is working in the construction industry to come in to help us. It's only kind of the tail end part that we managed to ramp up a bit with the foreign workers' friend coming in. We managed to ramp up to about 100 workers on the ground. Once I can see that the container can be lifted on site, at least the first hurdle we have crossed. And the next one is really just a matter of time to complete the whole project. During a circuit breaker period because also a supply chain issue. So it's a bit challenging also for the vendors, for our contractors to, to get the supplies in. The other piece is perhaps is the increment weather. Afternoon period, there'll be heavy rains, thunderstorm, everything. So with that, we have to temporarily suspend the work as well. So that will actually add on to the slightly longer construction period that we have. Hi, uh, my name is Durga. I'm the nurse clinician in charge of Ward at Boya. Patients will come in through this main entrance here. The ambulance will be arriving here, parked here, and the patients will be walked up to the ward this way. Uh, let me show you around the place. These are the um, rooms. Okay, so we have an A corridor and a B corridor, which has 26 beds here and another 24 beds here. So once we are fully done, and then we will bring the patient inside the room, and then we will do an admission process for the patient. So these rooms are single rooms and they come negative pressure, so air gets sucked in. Yeah, and um, the, the air doesn't flow out of the room when we come inside. Um, so we've already done a lot of pre-packing here so that we don't have to keep coming inside the patient's room. Um, this is uh, toiletries with masks and a digital thermometer which we will teach the patient to monitor their own temperature and then communicate with us through the uh, smartphone. We are using biosensors, right? So it's contact free, right? It's safe for our staff. We reduce the cross infection possibility, right, between the staff and maybe the patient, right? So the staff can take care of this patient without needing to go in and out very frequently, doffing and donning uh, PPEs, for example. Now the second thing is the monitoring is continuous. Right? Therefore, we can actually detect if someone deteriorates uh, early and intervene appropriately when it's needed. Right? If the nurse sees the call nurse request, um, they will actually call the patient via a video conferencing application to just check on what the patient needs or if they feel unwell. This poster here, right, is actually for them to point to the nurse whether they have any fever, cough, runny nose and some other symptoms because some of them has language barriers and they may not know how to express to the nurse. This uh, chest actually allows the doctors to better screen those patients and predict the group that will need more intensive care versus the group that can be sent to a step-down facility for less intensive monitoring. We will continue to use it for as long as we are able to utilize it. Like.